In this video, we've compiled undercover boss moments where bosses got furious. So without further ado, let's dive in. The president and CEO of Checkers and Rallies, the world's largest double drive through chain, poses as a failed business owner competing to win a fast food franchise. I'm Alex Garcia. All right. Rick Silva, the CEO of Checkers, a fast food chain, decided to participate in the show to understand the challenges faced by his employees. Little did he know that he would encounter an abusive manager who would push him over the edge. The general manager barking orders. Sir, I need you to drop what you're doing. I need you to take some trash out. And then I heard again. How many hours do you have right now? It ain't good. So if you go on overtime, I can take you outside and beat you up, right? During his undercover stint, Silva found himself working alongside an employee named Todd at the Fry Station. As they were conversing, the manager, known as Stevens, abruptly interrupted and ordered Todd to be quiet. Silva was taken aback by Stevens' behavior but decided to observe further. As the day progressed, Stevens' mistreatment became more evident. He not only belittled Todd but also threatened to physically harm him for not working hard enough. Silva, witnessing such unacceptable behavior, reached his boiling point. I couldn't work in a place like that. I really could not work there. I couldn't work there for 10 minutes. I would never let somebody talk to me like that. It's my Why job. Why do you keep working for Checkers? Because I do it because I need to help my mom. How does it make you feel? Like I'm worthless. Unable to contain his anger, Silva broke his character and took Stevens outside for a confrontation. It was an extraordinary moment on the show as the CEO rarely reveals himself during the undercover process. Silva expressed his profound disappointment and disgust, appalled by the way Stevens treated his employees. You run them, they don't run you. I came into this company just like you. Wanted to be nice, low tone, it doesn't work. If I don't scream at them, they don't listen to me. But I'm not gonna let you continue telling me I'm disrespecting my crew. In a bold move, Silva decided to shut down the entire restaurant on the spot, effectively ending the shift. It was an unprecedented action that sent shockwaves throughout the establishment. The employees, though, momentarily impacted, would soon discover that the closure was only temporary. I've been in the restaurant business for over 20 years, and I've been in the fast food business for over 20 years. I'm CEO for this company. I know exactly what it takes to run a restaurant like this, and guess what? I know the right way to do it, and I know the wrong way to do it. And what I saw here today is completely the wrong way to do it. Silva recognized that Stevens was ill-equipped to handle the managerial responsibilities. Instead of terminating him, Silva chose to send him for additional training, acknowledging that the company had failed to adequately prepare him for the role. The following morning, the restaurant reopened with the new manager in place, and Silva ensured that the establishment ran smoothly. Reflecting on the incident, Silva emphasized the importance of leadership and training within a company. He acknowledged that the manager's inappropriate conduct was a result of inadequate training procedures and oversight. Silva was determined to create an environment where employees feel valued, supported, and motivated. Hi. Yes, Mr. Rick. No, you. I can see by get something straight. First of all, yeah. you're going to apologize to her. Uh -huh. Okay. I just you know what? I don't need to hear it. I want a proper apology. In this episode, Undercover Boss finally reaches his breaking point. The franchise's consistent mistreatment of the workers had pushed him to the edge. He had observed how the franchise owner, Mr. Rick, lacked respect for the employees, and it was becoming increasingly evident that something needed to be done. His anger surged to new heights when he witnessed one of the employees, Sabrina, in tears due to the harsh treatment she received from Mr. Rick. Unable to contain his fury any longer, undercover boss demanded an immediate apology from the franchise owner. No more excuses, Rick. Apologize to her right now. He firmly stated, his voice resonating with authority. Mr. Rick, taken aback by the boss's forceful demeanor, reluctantly offered his apology to Sabrina. You can me, you can do whatever the hell you want to me. You can't treat people like this when they're crying at work. No, no, come on. Employees come first. You are disrespectful to the brand. And you know what? Do you want to quit? You want to come work for me? I'm ready to quit. Okay, you work with me, I'm going to triple your salary. However, the reprimand did not end there. Determined to make things right, undercover boss took a bold step and offered Sabrina a job in his company with a staggering salary three times higher than her current pay. The gesture left her speechless. Her tears of sorrow now transformed into tears of gratitude and disbelief. And just like that, the boss severed ties with the franchise, ensuring they can no longer use his brand. 
This decisive action sent a clear message to everyone involved that the mistreatment of employees would not be tolerated. Despite the tense situation, the underlying compassion of undercover boss shone through. He reassured Sabrina that everything would be okay and promised her a better future, free from the abusive environment she had endured for so long. It's not the way uh, it should be. Okay. It'll be okay. I promise. I swear to God, I promise. I don't even know what to think right now. It was nice to have someone stick up for you guys. I had a long time coming for all this to happen. So how about a big smile from me? Witnessing someone finally standing up for them was a moment of relief and gratitude for the other employees as well. They had endured mistreatment and disrespect for far too long. Now they actually had hope that positive change was within reach. The franchise owner, on the other hand, was left stunned and remorseful. He realized the extent of the damage he had caused with his actions and desperately tried to salvage the situation. But it was too late. The boss had already made up his mind. I'm Amanda, you must be Kevin. Kevin Jones. Hi, Kevin. I am one of the team leads here. In season six, episode 10 of the hit show, Undercover Boss, viewers witnessed a moment that would forever be etched in their memories. Armando Montalongo, the CEO of Armando Montalongo Companies, started a mission to gain firsthand insight into his real estate investment business. As he assumed the alias of Kevin Jones, he hoped to uncover the secret behind his company's continued success. Pretending to be an ordinary employee, Armando approached Amanda, a team lead at Armando Montalongo Seminars. Engaging in a brief introduction, he exchanged pleasantries with Amanda, trying to assimilate himself seamlessly into the work environment. Despite his disguised identity, Armando's genuine frustration slowly began to simmer beneath the surface. Attempting to navigate the call center's complex system, Armando encountered a glitch that halted his progress. He turned to Amanda and requested assistance, hoping to understand the root cause of this recurring issue. As she nonchalantly instructed him to recover the webpage, Armando's eyes widened with realization. Go ahead and just hit recover webpage. With so many systems being going in here with the same program, it tends to just hiccup sometimes. In a moment of reflection, Armando comprehended the gravity of the situation. The consistent technical malfunction highlighted a major flaw within his company's infrastructure. Anger seeped into his voice as he addressed Amanda, expressing his dismay at the recurring system failures. The disappointment in his voice was palpable. As he spoke, Armando's frustration intensified, fueled by the realization that these glitches were costing the company both time and money. The thought that such critical information had not been brought to his attention infuriated him. The weight of the problem and the company's apparent ignorance of it hung heavily in the air. All of a sudden, our system goes dead. And all I'm watching is spinning and spinning. And now my entire business is at a standstill. I felt powerless. How often does this happen? If we're really in here pumping, it'll happen maybe twice or so a day. <laughs> this stuff's going on twice a day in my company, and it's not getting back to me. I'm incredibly upset right now. We are losing money. Emotion surged within Armando as he struggled to contain his anger. This was a moment that transcended his undercover role, revealing the deep-seated concern of a CEO who had discovered an alarming issue within his organization. And the urgency in his tone was impossible to ignore. Well, we have time minutes. enough to show the basics, and then that's yeah. it, and then we I have to one go. minute of training. If you can't okay. do it, then you can't do it. Well, I mean, you gave me one minute of training. In Season 5, Episode 4 of Undercover Boss, viewers witnessed a moment of fury from none other than Anthony Weedo, the president and CEO of Buffets Incorporated, a renowned buffet restaurant organization. Seeking to experience the inner workings of his company firsthand, Anthony went undercover as a construction worker participating in a reality TV competition. How you doing? Mike Davis, how you doing? I'm one out of three managers here. One out of three? Okay. We all work together to make this place run. It's nothing in this restaurant that I haven't done and I don't do. Anthony Weedo joined Skyla, a colleague, in the kitchen, where he was assigned the role of a dishwasher. However, it didn't take long for Anthony to notice the major issues. Employees receiving a mere one minute of training before diving into their assigned tasks. I'm gonna set you with Skylar, help Skylar eat an extra thing and watch this. And so, don't tell you where you want you at. All right, well, today, your job is send all this through the dishwasher. When they come through the door, yep. make them put the wherever you want. Anthony's frustration grew as he realized that such minimal training made it impossible for the employees to perform effectively in their respective roles. Skyla briefed Anthony on his responsibilities, explaining that he needed to send all the dishes through the dishwasher as they arrived. 
Anthony couldn't help but feel dismayed by the lack of guidance given to the employees, leading to inefficiencies and potential mistakes. When the pots come here, you put them in the water. Sometimes you have to scrub them, sometimes you don't. And that's basically it. You're going to do that, and I'm going to do this in the front? You're going to do this, or how are we going to do this? Right now, you're going to run both positions. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Sometimes. It never happens, man. Oh, yes, it does. It does your manager not doing a good job. As Anthony juggled between dishwashing and other tasks in the front, his anger reached its boiling point. Unable to contain his frustration any longer, he decided to confront the manager about the inadequate training provided to the employees. He then revealed his true identity, making it clear that he was not Mike Davis, but Anthony Weedo, the president and CEO of Buffets Incorporated. My name's Anthony Weedo, I'm the president and CEO of Buffets Inc. Now, the good news is when I look out there, the guests are getting treated pretty well. But this is a mess back in here. Why aren't we training people? That's the thing. We had two other managers above me. Anthony expressed his disappointment with the management team. He questioned the lack of training and wondered why the managers weren't addressing this critical issue. He emphasized that while the guests seemed to receive satisfactory treatment, the behind-the-scenes operations were a mess, leading him to question the management's competence and compassion. Anthony made it known that he didn't care about excuses or burnout. What mattered to him was ensuring proper training for the employees. It was evident that Anthony's fury stemmed from a genuine concern for the well-being of his company and the success of his employees. On Undercover Boss, we witnessed different types of employees. Some are the best, while others deserve to get fired. You won't want to miss out on our video, The Worst Employees on Undercover Boss. Click here to watch.